On today's episode of Doodlebud, we're going to talk gold versus steel. What's the big deal? Let's get to it. But first, I got to eat this candy. It took so long to set all these pens up. Let's just go around the block one time. We're going to have even more pens to compare. But maybe you're wondering, is it worth the price? Just look at all these pens we're going to be going through. So quite a tree, a lot of trends we're going to go through today. We're obviously going to talk about gold versus steel, like I said. We're going to discuss the price point differences between a steel nib and a gold nib. But there's lots of other things to think about. Performance, how they feel, how they look, all sorts of stuff. So first up, let's just talk about what's really going on with a gold nib and a steel one. So you might be asking yourself, is it really worth it to pay the extra money for a gold nib when at the end of the day, this is the thing that's touching the paper, this little ball, this iridium tipping that they put on these pens. Now they say iridium tipping, I would very much doubt it's 100% iridium. Iridium is quite expensive. It is dense, which is good for what you're doing here, but it's got a high melting point. It can be tricky for some of the welding. So I imagine it's mostly a, a stainless steel type alloy, potentially one of those alloys is iridium. We've got the same material touching the page, so is it really even worth it to pay the extra price for a gold nib? You may automatically think that just because the nib is gold, that it's going to be more flexy because gold is softer. First, we got to remember these are alloys. These are gold alloys, whether it's 14K or 18K. At 14K, that means it's only like 58% gold so it's you know these are all alloys so it's not 100 percent gold this thing is very firm so again it is a it is an extra fine but it has no line variation on this pen whatsoever so you know it just it maybe gets it a little bit more wet but i you know it's a very very stiff nib and the reason it's stiff and not flex even though it's gold it really has to do with the design of this nib how it's made, the shape, the shoulders, the material thickness, all sorts of features that go into making a nib flexible. So this is just not designed to be a flexible nib. Here's my Visconti Rembrandt. And this is a fine nib. And this actually has a little bit of bounce to it. So this Visconti nib is a little more flexible than this gold nib here. But that's all has to do with the design of the nib. So even if I look at material thickness, the uh, Visconti is a little bit thinner, the shoulders as well, um, just how it's shaped and made, this would be more conducive to being a little more flexible than this guy. So the flexibility of a nib really comes from the nib design. Material does play a role once you have nibs that are both designed exactly the same way to have flex. But you know, for these types of pens, it's all in the shape of the nib itself, not so much the material. Speaking of flex, we got two modern flex pens, the Pilot 912 with the FA nib and the Fountain Pen Revolution Ultra Flex. So here's the Pilot FA nib. It's got lots of flex, just comes back lovely, really nicely done. But here's the steel Fountain Pen Revolution. Now, that railroading is more, more feed issues than anything. But it snaps back pretty easy as well. Very good line variation, especially for the price because this is way cheaper than this pen here as well. So they're both doing the same job. One's just going to be a lot more expensive than the other. But there is quite a difference in feel. You have to push down with more force on this guy than I have to with this guy. Now this scale doesn't have enough range to fully flex these nibs, but if I press down, I'll go to like 170 something, 180. Now again, that's not a true statement for every steel versus gold flex nib, but what I found in general when I'm using steel flex nibs versus gold flex nibs, you don't have to use as much pressure with the gold and it just does, in general, feel a little bit better, a little more natural. And the ones that I feel the best in the hand, I did a little video about it as well, are just vintage flex nibs, some vintage gold ones. They feel the best to me. Now, one of the biggest differences you notice with your gold nibs right out of the gate is the money. Here we go. We got two Lamy nibs. This is off a of Dialogue 3, and this is off my All Star. Gold, steel, both mediums different retail prices. 
So right now, the uh, U.S. dollar, instead of having to convert currencies for gold, is about, what is it here, 57.68 per gram. Some stainless steel sheet metal, again, in U.S. dollars. It's about $1 to $2 per kilogram. <laughs> convert that to grams. Zero. Two-tenths of a penny per gram. Now I know this is 14 karat gold, that's pure gold, so if we whittle this down, so we're looking at about 33.73 per gram of 14 karat. So in that nib, there's like 58.3% of this is gold. The cost of the gold, if this weighed a gram, would be $33.73. Versus, if this was a gram, two tenths of a cent. We bust out the scale again. The steel nib weighs, what, about 23 grams. The gold nib, I'm guessing it's going to be heavier. Say 0.35. So if we're working out the price for the gold in that nib, we got 0.35 grams times 57.68 per gram. Then we multiply by 14 out of 24. That's the 14 karat gold portion. So the gold alone in that nib, before we do anything else, is $11.78. So the steel nib was only 0.23 grams times 0 0.002 dollars per gram brings us in a whopping, eye-popping cost of... of <laughs> What are we, 46 ten thousandths of a dollar? No, sorry, uh, 46 one hundred thousandths of a dollar. $11.78 for the cost of the gold and the gold nib. Divide that by the cost of the steel. For the steel nib, we need, what, three zeros? Man, four six. So the cost of the material in the nib, it's 25,000 times higher for the gold than it is for the steel. So a quick check on eBay for the Lamy Dialog 314K gold nib. We're anywhere from like $52 to $77 US. For the steel nib, we're talking eight to 10 bucks. So even at the worst ratio, $8 versus $80, it's 10 times more, but that's a lot better than 25,000 times more. We're talking $70 versus $10. How much of a difference is there, doodle bud? Well, I got to tell you in this example, it's not even close. This is probably the smo smoothest uh, gold nib I have. I'm not too happy with the uh, nibs, actually, any of the steel nibs I've had on my Safari. I've had, I've tried other Lammies and I've been happy with them, but my Safari nibs, I haven't had much luck. Not my favorite, but uh, this thing is absolute butter. So are you willing to pay about $60 more to have a super, super smooth writing, well-flowing gold nib? That's your call. But is gold always smoother than steel? No, not the case at all. So like I mentioned previously, this is the part that's really touching the page. That's giving us that feel. So you could take any nib, gold or steel, and if it's not done right, it's just not going to feel great. Was the nib finish off properly? Are the tines different lengths? There's all sorts of issues you can have with the nib. And that's not only on steel or only on gold or on both materials. What does matter though is, is the nib properly tuned? This little Waterman is probably, I think it, it pretty much is, the smoothest steel nib I have. It's a medium, so yeah, the thicker the line width, the smoother it's going to be. But this thing is absolutely lovely. It's just perfect wetness. But here's a Ranga nib on this guy here. This is a mega cheap nib, very good value for it. And for a fine, it writes pretty darn well. I don't expect too much more out of my gold nibs for smoothness when it comes to a fine nib. If I use my Pelican right side by side, it's maybe a tad smoother, but if you close your eyes and you couldn't tell what you're using, they're both pretty much the same. Now, if you happen to have an expensive high-end pen with a beautiful gold nib, you might be more likely to send it off to a nibmeister and get the right nib that you want, just perfect for you. So this is a DIY nibmeister. This is my own homebrew. But it's a nice little fine cursive italic, and it's just the way I like it, and it's absolutely lovely. But I've done the same one on steel nibs. So here's this cheap little one. This started off as a medium. It's an uh, cursive italic medium now. But same thing, you can get lovely line variation as well. 
And actually this maybe feels a hair smoother just because, well, it's a broader nib. So it's going to feel a little bit smoother, but you can get cool grinds on steel or gold nibs. And if you're someone like me likes to mess around, you don't feel so bad about playing around with a five or ten dollar steel nib and seeing if you can make a really nice oblique double broad. So when it comes to steel nibs, you can get gold colored, you can get two-tone, you get these steel nibs that have these beautiful little patterns on them as well, but you're not going to find nibs that look this nice in just steel, especially when you get these beautiful two-tone nibs. I find the work on the gold nibs is a little more precise. I think you could probably even go a little bit deeper. Now I know there are some steel nibs. I think it's the uh, Pen BBS ones that have all this work and the gold two-tone as well. They look very pretty, but it just the shine on these nibs as well. You know, some of the gold nibs like on this Lamy here, it's hooded, so you don't really get to see it. So you might think, why bother? Here's a, a vintage one too that's hooded and a pretty plain one on this Pilot FA but they just look gorgeous. Like if you want to find a pretty, pretty nib, that's one of the requirements you want. You're usually going to find that in the gold nib section. So for some pens, you can get the exact same pen, same model, same trim, same everything, and you can just choose to have it with the gold nib. So in Ranga, for example, which is great, you can do that option. You can have a Yovo or Bach steel or gold version. Leonardo lets you do that as well. You can have the exact same pen and just choose to pay the extra coin to slap a gold nib on there. Does that guarantee the writing experience is just going to be oh so much better on this Leonardo if this was a gold nib versus a steel? No, not really. I'm super happy with this pen. I've had a fine on here and this uh, beautiful stub. This is the best stub I've used so far. It's steel. I got no problems with it whatsoever. And same with this Ranga. I purposely got these the way I did because I wanted to customize them afterwards. And generally speaking for pens where you have the option just to pay extra to get the gold nib, I typically stick to the steel nib on those pens, but that's just a personal preference. However, I would not mind going round two again with one of these Leonardo, especially in the grande size. There's this one, I think it's called like Sunflower or something like that, this beautiful resin they have. I would love to get that guy with the gold nib. But a lot of the time, the gold nib is only just part of the increased cost. You're getting also a premium pen, whether it be the materials, the trim, all the R&D that goes into making the pen amazing. A lot of the times you're not paying just for the extra cost of the goods and materials to make that nib. It's everything that goes into this pen. So a perfect example would be some of the Pelican stuff. Now this is the 800 series. But on the 200 and the 400, the main difference, yes, there's a gold nib on the 400 series, only a steel nib on the 200. But on the 400s and up, you also just get a, more of a premium pen too, especially with colors. And uh, there'll be some special editions they do as well. You are getting an overall better pen with the increased cost. So I did an engineering talk on this Lamy 2000 as I went through. There is a lot of work behind the making of this pen, especially compared to say this guy as well. Nothing wrong with this guy. It's a good pen. You know, it does a day, great job for daily writing, but there's, you know, yes, it's not just here, here's a gold nib, here's a steel nib. There is way more that goes into it. The craftsmanship on this guy is absolutely lovely. These threads are to die for fantastic threads the build everything else is great do pilot make amazing pens that come with steel nibs that are not as expensive yes but this pen yes it has a gold nib but there's a lot more to it than just the gold nib now can you get a little carried away with prices on some of these premium pens absolutely but when you come across ones like this you know they're not going to go through all the trouble to make a resin out of lava rock and then just chuck their standard steel nib onto the pen it's it's a premium pen premium materials i mean i'm pretty certain this body's injected molded so learning how to do that there's so much that's going to have to go into learning how to make this this material and what it can do what you can't do how to work with it and make your pens you're just not going to get that with a more of a basic model pen now if your only objective is just to write something on some paper 
And here you have an extra fine nib in a steel and two extra fines in gold. They're both going to do the job. Same for these fine steel nibs and these fine gold nibs or a custom grind and a custom grind. They're all going to do their job. However, one thing I have found with my gold nib pens versus the steel ones is, like I said, packaging and looks is premium, but also feel. When you get a properly tuned, lovely writing fine or medium or extra fine gold nib versus a properly tuned equivalent nib in steel, I do find it feels a little bit nicer. And in some cases way nicer. This thing is crazy smooth over this Visconti steel nib. The difference between gold and steel nibs can also be seen with these two, these Lamy nibs. I tell you the first time this golden Lamy hit the paper, this medium nib, I was blown away. It was a completely different sensation than writing with a medium tip nib on my little Lamy All-Star. When you turn them over, it's almost impossible to tell what is what. They look the same. How can it be that different but I have to tell you, it is massive. So on average, I do find that my gold nib pens do seem to write a little nicer than my steel ones. Even my best tuned steel medium nib that I have is no match for my best tuned gold medium nib. For some pens, the fact the nib is gold isn't the most amazing part of the pen. It has a lot also to do with just the overall aesthetics and build quality. For some, the fact that it has a gold nib is just sort of the icing on the cake on top of all the other great features and design parts of a pen. And yes, for some, it's just all about the nib. And for others, it's just about, well, it's so damn classy, it's gotta be gold. Another extra benefit of a gold nib pen is you sort of treat it like a piece of jewelry because I guess it, it kind of is it's a little more precious it's got a gold nib on it maybe it's got some other cool materials and stuff like that you just on average take better care of them it's not that I'm trashing these pens throwing them around but I do sometimes put it in my pocket or maybe the center console of the car not really doing that with these guys at all so I guess that's maybe part of the longevity of the pens you just take a little bit better care of them because it's got better materials in it as well that's what I'm saying. A great steel nib performs wonderfully. But if you get a really nice gold nib pen, there's nothing that's going to beat that. So throw in a few comments. Give me your thoughts on that as well. Hope you enjoyed it. And we'll catch you next time.